Hi, welcome to the Oliver Fetter YouTube channel. Today we're checking out what happened last week with my car. Coming out of the first time I drag raced it, I realized I had several boosts slash turbo exhaust leaks, which I anticipated would cause lower boost and overall lower speed and performance. So away we go. Okay. So here I am, I am just pulling things apart. This is directly after, well, this is the other day, just before going racing. I did this all like in a few hours at the end of my day, um, just before going to the track. So I pulled everything off uh, because I think the, I sprang some brake clean around and the intake manifold seemed like it had some leaks. Um, and then the exhaust manifold definitely was leaking. Here you go, check this out. Yeah, that's all soot. So you can see just how dirty everything was and like how much of an exhaust leak. Like look at the soot on everything. So that's what we're dealing with here and why I went in there in the first place. And then I think, yeah, you can even see it right in the middle of the screen there under that oil line. There's like soot on the back wall. So, my, uh, my fix, because what happens was the V-band I was using just stopped sealing well for one reason or another. I think it might have, like, the original clamp part might have broken and come loose, and then the, that allowed enough play for the two flanges to, like, hammer into each other with the vibration, and that eventually led to them just not being able to seal. So, easy fix, just weld your turbo directly to the manifold. <laughs> this is a little extra, but I also was just didn't want to foots around with another V-band. I got one and had it on hand and I was already looking at how it wasn't lining up well because it didn't have the male-female sides of it. So I said screw it and just welded everything together. Um, which, I mean, look at that. That seals good. There's no question about that. <laughs> Uh, and there you go, that's the whole thing. Um, I also re-welded the wastegate shut because I just wanted to be sure, I wanted to be able to actually see what it was doing without any kind of variables thrown in there. And there you go, it's back installed, threw it in the car. So then off to the races, yeah, I literally just finished doing that, put it all back together. I put the intake manifold on with RTB to seal it super well and I'm trying to think what else. I think I cleaned all the intake piping too. Cleaned everything, got the oil out of everywhere, welded the turbo, there was zero leaks. We are at Batamere Speedway again this week. Just made it over here. Just had time to take my intake and exhaust system apart. I had some huge boost slash exhaust leak. And so last week my turbo was putting out like 16 PSI, which with the amount of fuel that was coming out of the exhaust, it should have been spooled up way harder than that. Last week was like a baseline, but as I was learning, it wasn't actually a good baseline because of those leaks. So now we're getting a second baseline. I didn't touch a single other thing besides fixing some leaks. This is a 1.6 naturally aspirated pump with max fuel and a GT2052 turbo. Probably gonna see over 20 PSI, I would imagine. And last week I ran a 16.9 or something. And so this week I'm expecting to knock off probably a second or two. The car feels way better.
So it was a pretty interesting night. I'm like looking at this as I'm editing it. I went ahead and put the gauge clusters in because I thought it was interesting. But currently I think the only gauges that actually work out of those is my oil pressure and the boost. The water temp, as you may have noticed, bugs out. That's probably partially because it's a cheap gauge and sensor and also probably partially to the fact younger me put the sensor itself on the return heater loop. So it's not even like giving me accurate information. So before you go in the comments and go, what are you doing? It's totally fine. But I want y'all to be able to see like oil pressure and boost at least. This week I'm replacing several gauges. Oh, also the exhaust temperature gauge, definitely not working. If you guys noticed it like, increased and then it should have just kept getting hotter realistically and then at certain points like mid pull it would just drop back to like not reading sensors fucked i pulled it out with like a map gas torch on the tip of the sensor it wasn't reading it so thanks junk this week new water temp sensor in a better location and new pyrometer slash exhaust gas temperature sensor that actually works. As far as the runs go, it was an interesting day. My first run was my fastest, which I didn't expect at all. I ran a 16.85, which is a little faster than the week before, which was a 16.9. I was fully expecting to knock like seconds off with the boost lead fixed. And what's interesting is the turbo was feeling really good, but off the line, it was ridiculously fast relative to what the car has been in the past. First gear, you'd cook through all the first gear, like no problem. Like zero to 20 miles an hour was forced. The car would squat and everything. And then the rest of the time, it felt like it would barely go. Like, I know it sounds like it's going hard, but if you like watch my speedometer and even just watch the gauges, you hit 20 PSI and then it just sits there. It's like grinding away, but barely making speed. I think what we're really kind of seeing there is that turbo is too small. I also completely blew this turbo on this day as well. Blown in the sense that I've been complaining about oil problems. Then at the end of my last run, it was just hazing white smoke. Sure enough, when I pulled the intake piping apart later, there was oil everywhere. So I blew the oil seal finally completely on that GT 2052. Fortunately, I just so happened to have a GT22V, which is a slightly bigger variable geometry turbo that I got off some friends and their Sprinter van. This is really exciting because the 2.7 liter Sprinter engine, which is what it came off of, is spec for 150 horsepower. It's kind of translating that, this turbo should be a perfect size for our horsepower target, and I expect it to flow pretty dang good. The one complication on it is it is variable geometry, and that means you need some way to control it. In the meantime, I figured out I can just hit the pins on the solenoid on it with 12 volts, so I should be able to put it on the car and do that portion of the build, and then statically set where the veins are to a position that works well so it's not gonna be variable geometry at first, but me and a homie are gonna be working on getting an Arduino going, or basically a circuit to control what the veins are doing with respect to boost pressure. So this is super exciting, but also see in this video how hard the car launches and then extrapolate that to how fast it could be going if it wasn't getting choked out at the top of its RPM band. I think we're really gonna see some progress. That and then driving home, Driving home. Shooting flames out of the freaking exhaust. I've been super fuel focused up to this point. I need more fuel, I need more fuel, I need more fuel. And that's been true until this point. And now what I'm seeing is that we need more flow in our turbo. So even though I have a high lift rotor and 11 millimeter pump head that I can put in my fuel pump at any time, I'm gonna wait and get this bigger turbo nailed down and installed. Once we get a baseline with just that in our current pump setup, which is the 1.6 naturally aspirated, AKA Ollie pump with a governor mod. Once we get that nailed down, then perhaps I'll go back and throw the additional pump pieces in and see where we're at then. But super excited because the car is putting out a crap load of low end power and then just getting choked. So I'm really excited to see what happens when I get a bigger turbo that's not restrictive and let that top end get opened up. I think it's gonna be kind Kind of fucking sick. I think it's actually gonna be fast. So that is what's to come. Build video dropping somewhat soon because I have to go build this new setup today. Thank you so much for watching. You are appreciated. Have a good day out there.